Hi guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have news and it's coming from the guys at Autodesk and this is actually channeled towards 3D Studio Max 2020, the new update that's out which is 2020.1 and there's a couple of things that these guys have come up with and if you remember when we did the review for 3D Studio Max 2020, I went about talking about a couple of things that they said they were going to do and there was also a roadmap for you know the things that was going to come over to 3 studio max and you know we talked about all those things and today we're having an update to 2020 and there is just about three core things that they've talked about and so if you also remember when we talked about the other stuff they said with the coming update there is going to be a multi windows setup and it is very refreshing to see that this now exists in 3d studio max like finally we have something like this and you can now actually you know dock and redock your your viewports and you know use it with multi monitor setup this is going to actually help a lot of people especially if you want to work with the graph editor and at the same time you want to still see your viewport with a multi screen setup or with a multi viewport setup it's going to be very very easy and from the guys at autodesk they are claiming all right that these floating windows supports three viewports so you're limited to using just three floating viewport which to me is still more than enough, especially these days when people just basically have maybe just two monitors set up. I think three is more than enough. The floating viewports are all functional and you know, you can configure them separately. And this is super cool because at this point you can actually want to preview your models as clay on one viewport. And on the other hand, you may also want to also preview them as maybe the basic shading uh, stuff like that maybe with lighting and other stuff you may want to do that and it actually adds up to make complete sense and still speaking about the viewport these guys have also gone ahead to say that every other thing gets to work with it so you can also go ahead and you know multi windows you can redock things directly from your viewport and have them in separate places within your monitor which makes so much sense reminds me of what my basically does and what blender and you know cinema 4d and the other likes do and it's so good to see this now that it is now existent here in 3d studio max i'll put links to the description so that you guys can go ahead and check these things out and next thing is the hotkey so the hotkey is something that i particularly don't see so much improvement the guys at autodesk have also claimed that with this new hotkey you can go ahead to you know essentially find existing hotkeys okay so like if you press the keyboard b you get to find a couple of keys that actually relates to that you can change your hotkey and also create you know other custom hotkeys cool things are still the same things that we already know about that you can now import your keys export them out you know transfer them to friends and families or maybe to a workmate especially if you want to have a consistent uh keyboard shortcut all through your pipeline now the third and final update that has been made is to the chamfer so there is a lot of things these guys are doing with the chamfer modifier and i cannot say the least so the guys at 3d studio max have invested so much time in working on the chamfer modifier and it has some cool updates that comes with it and so now the chamfer modifier can actually be driven by weight channels all right so you can now use weight channel data from meshes to actually control this you can still go ahead and play with different maps so you can see you can now drive this by the weight and also you can scale that you can also use the depth type to actually get some sort of uniform uh, metered corners around an object and this doesn't just exist for edges so you can still use this and drive uh, vertices and faces at the same time and you can see it has a brand new radius bias which controls the radius of the chamfered corner and i think this might make a lot of sense especially if you're into hard surface modeling and yeah so these are basically cool stuff that has showed up and there are just three of them and for the bug fixes Yes, of course, they've gone ahead to do some enhancements for things like the max script and they've also fixed a couple of bugs. So I'm going to put link in the description so you'll be able to find these things out. Link also 
to the forum, to the community forum, where you can check out what people are saying there, is also going to be in the description. I've not been able to get my hands on this tool, that's why I've not tried it yet. But once I do get my hands on it, I will probably, you know, try it and maybe tell you guys what my feedback is. And tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section. Do you like 3D Studio Max? Have you used 3D Studio Max? Do you use 3D Studio Max? Tell me what you guys think about this in the comment section below. You can go ahead and check out the review which we did for 3D Studio Max and also check out a couple of tutorials where we get to compare Maya versus 3D Studio Max. So just in case you want to get into 3D and you're wondering which of them you want to work with, you know, you can go through and check these things out. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Go ahead, hit the like button and also turn on the notification. And if you're new here, it's going to be super amazing if you can hit the subscribe button and also turn on the notification because we release new content every day. And until I see you guys again with a tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.